Look at what this can do. Tell me that is not incredibly useful. This is a little device called the ATOL and it allows you to go between horizontal and vertical modes very, very easily. Now, when I posted this on Instagram, a lot of people lost their minds, really wanted something like this and a lot of other people were haters as haters are always gonna be and they said, well, that's not gonna work on a gimbal. That's not true. It's balanced right now to go landscape and if I turn the camera, look at the balance on the, the gimbal there, green, it's not changing whatsoever. So it is completely fine with this exact setup. There you go, in landscape. This is with the 50mm F 1.2G Master and the A7R5. I've swapped out to the 24-70 with the RS3 now instead of the RS3 Pro because with a lens that's not quite as front heavy as the 50 that I already showed you, there's a couple of little things you have to change and be aware of. So it still balances fine. If we look on the back there, you can see the little green icon there. It's currently balanced for horizontal and if we flip it to vertical, you can see that it's still in there and it's still green, still good to go. But you'll also notice that there is in fact a counterweight on the front of the gimbal now. And that is because of the way the ATOL mounts. It mounts obviously under the lens there instead of under the body of the camera. Now the body of the camera is the heaviest part, which means it's more towards the back. And in both the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, you can't move this plate enough to allow you to balance with the 24 to 70 when it's at 24. So because you can't balance it properly, it means you need to use a counterweight if you want to use a less front heavy or a less heavy lens like the 24 to 70 GM Mark II at 24, so at its widest, which with a gimbal, you're probably gonna be doing. So that is something you need to be aware of, but you can get these for quite cheap. This is one from Small Rig. I think it was like $20. Now, obviously, if I wanted to extend this and go to 40 or 50 up to 70 mil, no problem. I can remove the counterweight there and you won't have any issues balancing this on the RS3 or the RS3 Pro. Now, if you have a lens like the 1635, where when it's at 16 and it's widest, the barrel is extended, you might not have this issue. It depends on the lens and the setups that you're using. In general, a heavier front heavy lens is going to work better with this. Now, I did find when I was using the RS3 that I might have to calibrate it depending on the lens setup that I was using. That's just a case of going on the gimbal there and hitting start calibration and then going back to the other mode and then you'd calibrate it again. But that's still way faster than anything else out there to quickly swap between vertical and horizontal modes. Basically what the calibration is doing is fine tuning the motors so that it can work more efficiently and you're not gonna have any like shakes or anything like that. A few years ago, this kind of thing probably wouldn't have been possible because the motors and the gimbals really weren't as strong as they are these days. So that's something that we're really just taking advantage of modern technology to be able to allow us to do something like this. This is one of those products that I saw someone else have Dunner in our video that uh, we talked about all of our favorite gear last year. I'll link that video up there. He introduced me to this piece of gear and I immediately wanted it. What's that called? I actually want one. What is it? <laughs> it's the <laughs> Silence Corner Atoll. So I reached out to Atoll. They sent me one through. Thank you, Atoll. It's designed for taking stills basically. But when I got it, got my hands on it, I started thinking actually this might be quite useful for this kind of setup. So that's what led me to try it out and here we are. Now in terms of how this actually functions as a device, let me run through with you now. So you've got Arca Swiss here, you've got Arca Swiss here. This is the part that you attach to your gimbal, to your tripod, whatever you have it attached to. The rotation is actually happening within this part here of the, we'll call it a lens collar because it's kind of what it's like. But the lens actually isn't rotating because the part of the ATO attached to the camera here is, is attached to it. The rotation is actually happening inside of here. That is rotating like so. With the lens removed, you can see a little bit easier what is actually going on here. You see how this is attached to the bottom of the camera? That is the part that is allowing it to, to grip to the camera and then the rotation happens within the ATOL unit itself. This part here, if you loosen this, that allows you to actually rotate it. But you can put it that way and then lock it and it will not rotate then. So in terms of how you actually set this up, here's the A7R5 with nothing attached to it. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this plate right here, this part, on the bottom of the body. So we're gonna screw that in like so. Once you have this attached to the bottom of the camera body there, we can flip it to its front and you can see that this isn't really centered. So what you actually need to do is move this out of the way as if you were turning it, loosen this off these two screws right here. And then this gives you access to be able to center this. And you're just gonna do it by eye. So that looks about right. Hold that there like so. And then I'm going to tighten these screws back up. That's one. You don't need to do it a lot. They don't 
need to be tightened a huge amount and then that's it and now this will turn freely like that so imagine this is attached to the tripod you can then turn it from here you want to take the body cap off so i'm going to push and hold that button there and remove that and then i'm going to put on my 50 mil here once the lens is on there this will freely turn you can attach this to whatever you want and uh you're good to go. Now there are a few caveats with using a system like this. It's not the quickest and easiest to set up. You do lose access or easy access to your lens button. You can kind of get to it with the edge of your nail, but that doesn't make it easy to quickly change a lens if you need it to. You can do it, it does work but it's just not as easy as if that wasn't attached. I will put a link to the product below because if you are looking at buying something like this, you wanna make sure that you buy the right one because there are different ones that work with different lenses and different systems. That's basically it for today's video. I just wanted to show you what is possible with this setup. If you are someone that needs to quickly go between vertical and horizontal for photos, for video on a gimbal, you might find this is a good setup for you to try out. Thank you, Atel, for sending this through. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.